So, level composition. What is it? It's a very broad term, but in essence, it's how your scenes are set up in your game to lead your player towards each key point in your game. In this video, and the next one, I will be branching out all of the design and theory points and bringing them all together to make a coherent ending to the progression saga. With this video including the main theory and the next putting all into practice and finally creating and designing some quality levels for our game. Now, you must know that every single object in a game is put there purposefully. There's never a mistake beside bugs when it comes to game development. There are four main key terms when it comes to level composition and you need to get to grips with these if you want to become a successful level designer or artist. In fact, this applies to any media in photography, film, advertising and of course games. These words are colour theory, mise en scène, composition and lighting and shadows. Let's go through these terms with examples and try and understand them a little better. Here's a scene from a level in Uncharted 4. Let's analyse this and try and understand these key terms. So, colour palette. Colours, of course, are a huge part of art and media industries, if not the main factor in what creates a good piece of media. There are always three points to a colour here's the key terms to understanding colour a lot better. Hue is the overall colour of the texture. Saturation is the strength of that colour, black would be zero. And value is how light or dark the colour is. There are plenty of resources which explain colour a lot better than I can in a short video, so I'll leave some links in the description to help you. A quick program to see the colours in a scene is Adobe Colour. I'll leave a link in the description below and see what awesome stuff you can do with that to really start thinking about colour a lot more. There are four types of colour palette. Monochromatic is one hue, but different levels of saturation and value. Analogous is almost the same as monochromatic, but it uses very similar hues instead, such as if I were to pick this blue, I could also choose these blues around that one. Complementary colours are opposite on the colour wheel and really add to each other well. And finally is triadic. This is split three ways on the colour wheel. So for instance, red, blue and yellow are triadic. There are a lot more, such as split complementary and double split complementary, but realistically you won't need to think about anything further than the four I've shown you. Okay. So now I've sort of explained what colour theory is, how does this tie into games? When you were young, you were probably taught about warm and cold colours, what colours feel like and how colours relate to emotions. Now this is true throughout media too. Look at this image for instance. Though tricky to understand the background, we can see the feeling of this image is cold, lonely and sad. This is true for your games too. Let's apply this to the image of Uncharted 4 now, and I'll talk about my favourite way to analyse games. It really helps to be able to get to grips with the composition and really making your levels great. Okay, so let's grab the colours from Adobe Colour, and that shows that the scene is actually analogous, with a few points of interest here and there, mainly with Sully and the green car. Notice something? They're complementary colours. They are our primary focal point. And these colours bring our attention straight to them. Looking at the whole image, we can see that the scene is a warm gradient, going from hazy oranges of a hot summer evening to a blue-green towards the right. This is purposeful, of course. The gradient drags our attention to the back of the scene, which tells us the next place we'll be heading, assumedly in that car we are heading towards. Okay, let's book that and move on to the next key phrase. Mise en scène is a French term which means staging or setting the scene. You can pretty much imagine what this means. Yes, it's literally what we see in the frame. But what does that mean for our analysis? If a scene is empty or, or is missing anything, the scene will be boring and unrealistic. The player needs to feel immersed but for placing simple objects 
around the scene makes the world believable and interesting. Let's analyse the mise-en-scene in the Uncharted 4 scene. Okay, so Nathan Drake is jumping from a height and we can tell by the direction of his body he's going to be falling into the car with Sullyan. Speaking of that car, it's very messily parked which symbolises a rush. The street is quite cluttered which adds to the foreign feel to the scene. This is amplified by the bikes on the left and the colours and shapes of the houses. The fences here borders the scene, showing a clear but nuanced edge of the map. Finally, the puddles in the mid back of the scene reflect the blue sky which draws us towards there naturally. This is the first place our brains will take us due to the feeling of more space due to the brighter colours. I think that's me's on the same pretty much covered. Now on to composition. In media, we constantly talk about composition because it is incredibly important. Now it's quite a broad term, but I like to keep it fairly simple when I analyse. I talk about the percentage total of what's making up the scene, the framing, the lines, Fibonacci, the background, mid-ground, foreground, rule of thirds, rule of odds, negative space, shape language. <coughs> <coughs> ah, it's not so simple at all, is it? Okay, well, let's make the video longer, but let's try and speed up this part. We aren't long-winded gurus, after all. The percentage of the scene is self-explanatory. You know, one-fifth sky slash background, one-fifth characters, three-fifths mid-ground action and direction. Framing is how the camera is set up. In this situation, it's a Dutch angle to convey the acceleration of this character. Lines are the directions for our eyes. They can be clear or implied. For instance, if the implied lines from the Nathan to the car, to the car to the progression at the other end of the scene, but also the physical lines of the borders and shapes around those lines all lead that way. Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers we can all call the grade golden ratio. I don't think it entirely applies to this scene, but basically you want everything to line up to the lines drawn in this spiral when creating media. Whew, almost halfway. Background, mid-ground, foreground is the back, mid and front of the scene. Here's the back, mid and fore. Rule of thirds is a concept that focal points should be close, close to a line, equal distance from the sides in a third. The character and the car are both the thirds and arguably the progression point. Rule of Oz is the theory that the focal point should always contain an odd number of objects if placed within a group, not entirely applicable in this scene, but a very interesting concept. Negative space is a blank space in the scene. This is important to lead the characters towards the shapes in the scene. Often this includes the floor and the sky, and they're practically all blank. Final point I'm going to explain is shape language. This is probably the most crucial part of composition. This is the theory that different shapes mean different things. For instance, circles or round objects are typically friendlier than square or triangle shape, but the square is much more brutish and industrious, with triangles taking the mantle for the naturally strong and important. Whew. That's composition in basic form. This goes way deeper than what I've just explained, and it's very important as an artist to learn. I recommend doing your own research as a composition is a huge language of art and has been since the dawn of time. Oh and also, the easiest way to see if a scene would work is to thumbnail it. This means lowering the res resolution and adding some filters. As you can see, this scene works and is still dragging your attention to Nate with most of the distance being lost towards the cars. <sighs> Final key term was lighting and shadows and while obvious it ties into a lot of the mood of the scene. For instance, in this scene there is a great light balance. The direct light is coming from the top left section of the sky and the indirect is reflecting off the floor directly opposite to the direct. Because the scene is analogous, the lighting really is the main thing that contrasts the part of the scene from the other. The main light is coming from the left which implies that the place he's come from is less safe than the place he's driving towards. The area in the back is much lighter, signifying freedom and life. And that's about it. That's level composition in a nutshell. And that wraps up the progression saga. In this video, it should have taught you how to analyse your levels properly. And the next episode should teach you how to properly put these theories into practice with examples. And finally, some art and level design. Have a great day.